You know how on Windows you download drivers for every new device that you install. Sometimes Windows will try to find a generic driver for you, but Linux doesn't work that way. Uh, things are pretty much working out of the box most of the time, except in some exceptional cases. In the case of tablets, for example, Wacom ones work pretty much out of the box. And what's interesting is the settings on GNOME and in Pop! OS for the tablet are even called Wacom tablet. Even though it's recognizing the tablet right now, I don't have the settings because I have a Huion one that's not officially supported, but you can see it's working. I'm using the tablet right now. It's being recognized, but the setting, the device itself is still called Wacom tablet. I'm using code to make it work as I want it to. And that's something that I really appreciate working with Linux is even though the support is partial, it's like there's no driver from Huion itself right now. I think they were working on one, but there's no official driver for that. And yet I can use a few commands and make my tablet work exactly how I want it to. And if there's a bug in the driver, because one thing to say is if you used, I've used Wacom tablets for a long time on Windows and I've had driver errors uh, so many times. The good thing here is Wacom tablets work pretty much flawlessly in the small experience I've had with Linux and the Huion one, well, I have nothing to complain about. I've never had a crash on the tablet driver, but I want to talk about how I'm making it work. I'm going to run you through the code if you are using a Linux device and you can use the idea behind that code to make your tablet work in general. Note, I'm not using bash here. In fish, in order to create a variable, you use the set command followed by the variable. I'm going to uh, zoom in. Variable name, like so, followed by the value. And if you want to use the result from a command, you put that command in parentheses. Let me show you a few things. Hold on. It's a bit too big now. Okay. I'm using the xset Wacom, which gives me access to driver related commands for the tablet in order to get some information about the devices. So the, most of the script is setting some variables so that then it, the real meat, the setting the values is done down there and I could hard code everything and not have any of the variables up there, just have values down there. But this is so this program is maintainable and so hopefully other people can use it as well. Except Wacom list is going to list all the recognized devices by the driver. It recognizes the pen stylus and the pad out of the box. The only problem is the mapping by default is going to be on my two screens and it's not going to respect the tablet's proportions, which is not what I want. I want it to be mapped to my main screen and to respect my display's proportions so to have some dead area on my tablet, a thin one. And th that is what the calculations are, are for. So then I'm using the pipe here to send the result from the list uh, argument on X at Wacom, passing these strings to the grep command and then to the cut one. With grep stylus here, if I do that, grep stylus, I'm going to grab the first line, the line that has the keyword stylus. And then I can use the cut command to cut parts of a string of text. And by default, if I use the F argument, it's going to take a field and a fields are delimited by tabs by default. There's one tab in this command in this string here. So if I do F2, it's going to grab the second field here. Let's go back to that. So I'm grabbing the first line, then cutting to the second field. It's going to give me the ID column 12. And it, it seems, yeah, there's a tab as well right here. And so the last one, the last cut, 
I'm going to specify the delimiter. I don't want it to be a tab, I want it to be a space. And so I put it in quotes and I grab the second field. If I were to do something like echo a string, for example, let's say, yeah, I am a string and I cut to the fourth field with a space as a delimiter, I'm going to get string, the word string only. So I'm doing that to get the ID of the stylus and the pad in the script. And we are going to use this, these IDs to get the tablet's width, the tablet's height, and then to set some properties on the stylus and on the pad down there in the exit wacom and x input commands, which allow you to, again, modify the input properties of the tablet right in the driver. Then I'm setting the screen width and height and the tablet, same thing, width and height. These are values that depend on the tablet. So I'm asking the exit Wacom driver here to give me the area of the tablet. Use the get option on the driver, then the ID of the device you want to use followed by the parameter that you want to get. And the parameter is area. So it gives you the rectangle of the tablet, zero, zero, width and height. I get the result from this area command and I got the third and the fourth field. And this is going to give us the tablet's width and its height in the driver's coordinates. It's going to give you values of a few tens of thousands if I echo the tablet's width, for example, 44 thousands here. I use these four values up there to calculate the, so the new tablet's height, the height we are going to use on the tablet itself. And for that, first I use the math command to make a calculation. I'll talk about that in a second. But so you, get, you take the screen's ratio 1080 divided by 1920, so 16 by 9, and you then multiply that by the tablet's width in this case. Because you want to get the height relative to the width of the tablet that has to stay fixed. And then if you were to apply that height to the driver, it would make a smaller rectangle starting in the top left corner of the tablet's detect stylus area, if you want. And the problem is it would leave an empty border at the bottom. So I'm calculating an offset Y that is half of the height we are removing from the starting height. And I'm doing that on two lines so I can do the calculation. First do the subtraction and then the division. And this is going to give you a small offset for your rectangle that's going to center the new stylus area based on your screen's proportions here. And finally, there's... Um, okay, so I want to talk about this, the math command. It comes with fish. It's not something that you have necessarily on Linux. Math allows you to make math calculations and then you can type 8 plus 4, it's going to give you 12, etc. I have this scale equals zero, or you could type it as math S zero, like that. It means you round to the nearest integer. If I were to do uh, 18.4, like that, it would give me 18. This is just to make sure that I don't have any decimal places in my calculations. And then there's one little thing here in the command, because in fish, the wildcard is a glob pattern and it's going to try to match lots of things. If I do echo this, it's going, you see, it finds everything in the current directory. But like if I was doing the ls command, you have to escape it with a backlash here to do a division. Then getting the primary screen ID, you could hard code it once again. But instead, I'm using the xrender command, which is going to list the 
put possible displays or inputs. So X render like that. And it lists a lot of things. And let me see what was the code here. I'm using grep to filter down to the line that says primary, which is the primary screen, like so. And then once again, the cut command to filter to this ID. And the screen that I'm working on right now is connected to the HDMI port of my laptop. This is HDMI zero, the first HDMI port. And I'm using that ID then to assign to map there you go so you use the exit wacom driver to first i reset the area on the tablet for the stylus this raw sample four i'm not sure what it does exactly i've copied it from david revois script on how to set up his tablet it probably has something to do with the sampling when you move the stylus i will have to check it later it's the only not line I just copied and pasted as is. But then to map the tablets area to my screen, I have to use X input or I'm using X input here, the map to output sub command, and I'm mapping the stylus, and this corresponds to the stylus area to my primary screen. And the good thing with that is if you have two screens that have the same resolution, you can use a shortcut, you can add a shortcut on your computer and have a command that takes map to output and that's going to alternate between your two screens. Then the last thing is setting the um, stylus area so it respects the screen's proportions and for that you set, so for the device stylus ID, the area, and area takes four parameters to define a rectangle. First is zero, the X start, then the Y start is going to be our tablet offset Y and the width of the uh, stylus area is going to be the original tablet width. That doesn't change. N then we use the new calculated tablet height. If I were to use exit Wacom get here the area, now we can see it's not the same value as in the beginning. Oh, hold on, I have to rerun the code here. And let's see. And it's not working. Great. It seems I've got to fix the calculation for the tablet offset Y, but at least the overall logic of the code is there already. The most important part, I think, maybe, is how to register that code and have it run every time you start a new session. So I have it in a file called tablet.fish here. And you use this first line, the command with an exclamation mark to tell the shell when you're on Linux, I don't know, when you're going to execute this as a program, which executable it should use to read that code. And so I'm not using bash. Often you will see this at the top of the script. You will see slash uh, bin slash bash, very common. And I'm using the fish shell, and so the binary for it is in my user directory slash bin slash fish. If you want to use a different shell and you want to know where the executable is, you would use which followed by the command's name. I used which fish to find my fish shell's executable. Okay, then you store this file somewhere on your computer. I'm going to yank the copy the path to it and open Nautilus here. Then I can use uh, the slash key to open the path editor, paste the path, and I don't want to open it yet. I'm just going to go to the corresponding folder, which I only have one script here for now. You want this file to be marked as an executable. So you can right click and go to properties or press control I, go to the permissions tab and make sure that allow executing as a program is checked. Once you have that, if you open the shell and you've set up your script properly, 
you can directly execute the file using the dot slash notation here or using the full path to the file. That would be this. You can press enter and it will execute instantly. Okay, so this proves you that this file is executable. Otherwise, if it's not, you will get an error. But once you have that, you can copy the file to the path. So in Nautilus, you select the file and press Control C and it copies the full path. Then in GNOME, at least, you go to the Startup Applications a mini app or GUI. You can also use the command line, but this is the visual way to do it. You add an entry, name it and describe it however you'd like, but the command is going to be the full path to your shell file. So the name would be tablet setup and you can add some command here to explain what it's doing. I've done so right here. And every time you're going to log in or even if you suspend the computer or you log out and you log back in, it's going to run that code automatically. So it's going to set up your tablet for you. I've got one thing to fix, one last thing. Uh, after a little while, the computer does not log out, but when my screen dim dims down, it seems to reset the tablet. And uh, that I don't know how to rerun the code or to prevent that issue. If anyone knows that that would be great, please tell me in the comments. Now, if you don't want that hassle, really, the Right now, you might want to either buy a Wacom tablet or buy a tablet that people sell you. It works like Wacom tablets and you can use the, in GNOME at least, the Wacom tablet interface here. But I've been quite disappointed by Wacom's support and the fact that for the price, the, the support, it used to be excellent. The drivers have always been uh, debatable uh, on Windows, at least. I've always had crashing drivers on Wacom devices on every computer I've owned over the past 10 years, so not great. But the worst thing is their devices are very expensive, yet the support is has become pretty bad. It was not like that in the past. They were extremely reactive and it's not the staff working there, they, they are nice, etc. But I have had issues with my Wacom computer and they ask you the same information many times. They really try to slow you down in the process of sending your device back for repair, although there's a clear, um, in my case, there's an obvious um, manufacturing issue with it. The screen has popped off the frame, and I send photos, etc. And they re-asked me the same information three times, and now sending it back asked me to rewrite all the information, the, the serial number, the everything. They asked me a, a long list of uh, information to write it down and to put it in the package while they, my device is registered, etc. So it's they, they have all the information, right? So it's it's really obvious that they are trying to make the process. How could I say to turn you off? You know, to make you not want to use the support. I think. Anyway. You can find the script. I'll put it probably in the description or something like that because you can copy paste it as is if you want to try. Remember that this is fish code. You can replace the set things. Instead, in bash, you would use variable name equals, and I think, I don't remember if you put the dollar in front or not, and then you put the value on the right. I'm not sure how you collect the result from a command. Maybe it works with the parents as well. Anyway, you, you would have some minor changes to make in bash. You would have to replace the math command with something like this calc or exec as well. I think you have these that you can use for calculations. But besides that, it should mostly work and it should, you know, you can at least draw inspiration from it. But that's it. I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.